we all have things that annoy us, right? And we all have, or have had, neighbours that are really annoying. Sometimes, one neighbour's just really, really mardy. And other times, one neighbour's just really, really annoying. You know, the type of person that's just got no concern for other people. And the type of person that gets mardy at the slightest little thing. I remember one guy that used to get really upset if he sat on his garden wall. Well, in this case, the apparently annoying neighbour is 41-year-old Dean Alsop. He's a dad of three, and him and his oldest son are keen motorcyclists. It's quite a hobby of theirs for to play around with the motorcycles, tweak them a little bit, and whatever else. His mardy neighbour was 48-year-old Jamie Crosby. Before we go on, this is a true crime. It involves real people, and then real people have families. So although I do want you to share and comment, please be sensitive as you do so. It turns out our mardy neighbour, Jamie Crosby, had a bit of an issue with his temper. So much so, he had a conviction for actual bodily harm in 2013. That came about because he went to the job centre to complain about his benefit entitlement. For one reason or another, they asked him to leave, but then when the security guard turned up, Jamie punched him. But that's not the only previous issue. Dean and Jamie had been in a previous dispute, which happened three years before the case that we're looking at today. It was in 2018, June to be precise. Their waste bins were out on the front, ready to be collected, and Dean went outside to put some rubbish in the bin. But their bin were full, so he looked over, he saw Jamie's. Jamie's is quite empty, he lives on his own, so he just put it in Jamie's bin, thought not more of it. Now, I know this is a sensitive issue for some people, but it obviously weren't that much of an issue for Dean. But Jamie saw him, and it were an issue for him. He really weren't happy about it. So, put yourself in that position. You see that happen, what are you going to do? Probably open the window, open the door, shout out, saying, hey, I've just seen you put something in my bin, get it out, or something along them lines. You're going to have a verbal disagreement and tell them not to do it again. Long story short, there were a verbal argument between the two, but it escalated quite a lot to the extent that Jamie harmed himself with a knife and a saw, then chased Dean down the street. He weren't able to catch Dean, so later on, Jamie threw a hammer at Dean's house. Unfortunately for Jamie, he missed. The hammer went straight through the neighbour's bedroom window. The incident were reported to police, and Jamie was convicted of the offences, including uh, weapons offences and criminal damage. But ultimately, he was given a suspended prison sentence. So let's fast forward three years. It's now 2021, and Dean's noticed his son's motorbike's not quite sounding right. There's something wrong with the engine, and he can't quite figure it. So he contacts his friend that lives on the same street, and this friend is a motorbike mechanic. He says, can you come over, have a listen? He says, sure. He comes over. Dean's son revs the bike up for like two or three minutes. Now, Jamie's sat in his bungalow. He's had a bottle and half of wine. He's trying to watch television, and he can hear his bike being revved up. He's right not happy about it. Which is fair, which is fair, but if it is only for two or three minutes, come on. You can just let bygones be bygones, you know? So Jamie gets up, he goes to the window, and he sticks a middle finger up at the three blokes outside. He swears him a bit, and he says he can't even television, pack it in. He then swears a bit more, and then he turns to Dean and says, come get me. Now, I'm not sure how Dean's reacted up to this point. I imagine there were some retaliation, but to be fair, three years prior, this man had chased him down the street with a knife. So I can't really imagine that it's taunting him too much. You know, it's, it's just not going to happen, is it? Either which way, Jamie comes back out of the house, just like he did three years before, and he's got a saw and he's got a knife. It were either at this point or just before it, Dean for 999. And as he did, well, while they were on the phone, he turned to his son and said, you need to go home, get inside, get safe. Once again, just like three years prior, he starts chasing Dean. Dean is still on the phone to the police at this time. At some point during the chase, Dean takes his motorbike helmet off and he throws it at Jamie as like a deterrent or a way to slow him down. When Dean's son gets back outside, it's too late. Dean's already been stabbed. So he goes all to his dad and he claims that his dad said, he's killed me. As a result, he begins to cry and this is when Jamie starts trying to attack him. In his defence, he retaliates, and he leaves a wound on Jamie's head and his hand. He then turns, runs back home, tries to get his mom to come and help. During the attack on Dean, Jamie broke his saw, so he too went home. A short while after, like space of a minute, Dean's missus, or Dean's partner, they weren't married I don't think, she comes out. Jamie's nowhere to be seen, but Dean's laid on the floor, face down and motionless. However, shortly after, 
Jamie reappears again. It turns out the only reason he went home is to replace the broken saw with a knife. So now I think he's got two knives again. He goes back to Dean and continues stabbing him in the neck and upper back. He then turned on Dean's partner and another neighbour, a female neighbour if it matters, that had also come out to help. Shortly after, he just walks back into his house. Dean's partner's left with a stab wound in her chest and a deep cut in her head. The other neighbour, who were in her 50s, had also got serious stab wounds to her neck, amongst other injuries. Officers arrived at Primrose Crescent seven minutes after the 999 call. The first responders described the scene as carnage, with people screaming, injured and covered in blood. Despite receiving treatment, Dean was pronounced dead at the site at 18 minutes past 8 in the evening. A home office post-mortem established that it was a stab wound to his chest that was a fatal wound. But in total, Dean had been stabbed 17 times. Jamie was arrested at scene, initially on the suspicion of assault, but then later on, while still on the scene, that changed to on suspicion of murder. After being cautioned with a later charge, he said, That's a good thing. That's a good thing. I'm very happy about that. Killing people isn't always a bad thing. Here is the body cam footage of the arrest. For anyone listening on the podcast, Jamie's got blood running down his face from a wound on his head, and he's also got blood all over his hands. And I mean, his hands are absolutely covered. Drop the knife. Drop the knife, my friend. Drop the knife. Okay, come out. Come out. All right, stand, stand still. Turn round. Turn round. All right, knee on the floor. Knee on the floor. Okay, hands behind your back. Okay. Echo mic. Sorry? Echo mic 2 1. I've got the man red dotted. Um, he's dropped the knife outside number 79. Right. Ambulance are on scene. There's a male lying on the ground by the garages. You want to sit down and I'll look at your head and your arm? No, I don't want you touching me. We just said to get somebody. I'm somebody. Everybody, everybody else is busy. I'm as good as it gets, all right? So either sit down. No, I don't want you touching me. Well, do you want, want your injury treated? No. Not by you, no. Jamie, listen carefully. It's now 20 past eight. I'm further arresting you for murder. You're still under caution. I do not have to say anything to my arms defense, okay? You're still under caution. You've, you've now been arrested for murder, further arrested for murder. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. I'm very happy about that. Killing people is not always a bad thing. After receiving treatment, Jamie Crosby was interviewed. He was later charged with murder and two counts of attempted murder. But guess what? He denied all charges. Anyone have any ideas to why he might have denied all charges? Yes, he tried to plead guilty for the lesser charge of manslaughter on grounds of diminished responsibility. He claimed he was suffering from an abnormality of mental functioning. Now, I am constantly in the comments on these videos talking about how it seems so easy to get a murder charge dropped down to manslaughter especially because the judge accepts diminished responsibility. However, despite a psychiatrist saying Jamie was suffering from delusional disorder, I'm sure a lot of you will be glad to know that the judge had absolutely none of it. They did not accept his plea for manslaughter. After a two-week trial, on Thursday the 4th of August 2022, Jamie Crosby was found guilty of the murder of Dean Allsop. Although he was not found guilty of two counts of attempted murder, he was found guilty of of two counts of wounding with the intent. Something that is absolutely horrendous about this case is back in 2018, three years prior, when he'd already chased Dean down the street with a knife, he'd got that suspended sentence and he had a probation officer. He told, it was said in court, that he told that probation officer that 
he did intend to kill Dean. Or I think the quote was, he would kill Dean. Now, why was nothing done about this? This guy was on a suspended sentence, living across road from Dean or next door, whatever, and he told this probation officer that he was going to kill him. What, why, why, why would that be allowed to happen? And I don't know, maybe he were taken away or whatever else, but it's just ridiculous that this situation's just left to boil over is essentially what's happened. And when I say it's boiled over, I don't mean that they're both to blame and it's just got worse and worse. I mean, this guy was obviously going to end up doing something at some point to anybody that annoyed him. In a victim statement read out to court, Dean's partner said, It's so hard to explain the true impact that this has had on the family. We're broken. It's true when they say physical scars heal, but those memories which scarred my mind of Dean's last moments will haunt me for the rest of my life. There's not one day I don't wake up and think about it straight away. I'll never forgive Crosby for what he's done to my family. He's taken the biggest and best part of it away from us all. I have got the best family in the world. They've all given me and the kids so much support. I can't thank them enough, and I want them to know how much I appreciate them. I'll never ever take family and friends for granted. There you go, that is all I've got for you. My love massively goes out to Dean's family. What an absolutely horrendous case. Uh... I do have to apologise, I know it's a very short case, uh, not very detailed, I know, I'm aware, uh, I didn't have much time this week, so it was either a short video, or it was no video, and I didn't want to give you no video, so I just banged out a quick one, but that doesn't take away that this is still a murder, it's still a case, it's still crazy, and a family have still had to go through a traumatic event, even more so than most, the, the mum's been there to witness it, the son's been there to witness it, and this guy, he would just, you know, it's just wrong. So wrong. So my advice to you is let's be a little bit more tolerant, yeah? I know there is people out there that are selfish, psychopathic, but let's be a bit more tolerant. And there's other ways and other means to get around it. I'm not saying every situation's the same. I'm not saying every situation's easier. But come on, the cost of your life, the cost of their life, really isn't worth it. This is an extreme example of world's worst neighbour. I don't know how annoying Dean had been over the time that they lived next to each other, but surely he hadn't been that annoying that he deserved to lose his life. I'm sure his kids didn't deserve to lose their dad. This needs to stop happening. It's just wrong. Until next week, guys. Goodbye.